Hi everybody, welcome to the Improved Garage. It's been a minute since I've done a video, like honestly two weeks, something like that. It's been super rainy here in California. I've had a lot of stuff going on. I'm working on my office, uh, kind of working on prerequisites for the office. You see the video that I just did on my closet, which my safe that was in my closet is going to my office, which made me change some shelving around and then I decided I want to do lights. So I did the lights and all of that. But there'll be some content on that if you guys want to see it. Like I mentioned, uh, put some comments in the in the chat if that's the kind of stuff that you want to see. I'm going to be painting, carpet, uh, ceiling fan, DMF lights. I have an uplift desk that'll get moved in there. I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, just a bunch of different things. Uh, new Samsung TV is going to go in there, which I've never owned a Samsung TV. Um, but now I actually own an LG, a Sony, and a Samsung, so I can really comparatively show what the differences are between them and understand them inside and out. So I've got a bunch of uh, stuff that's come in the last couple of weeks that I really haven't talked about or done anything with yet. Uh, there will be some videos to come on that. I still need to do the video on the auto fiber, um, the mitts. I have like four or five different uh, mitts that go on that, um, the reacher tool. So I will talk about those at some point soon. I also have a bunch of black Lutron stuff for my garage. So like the switches that are back there and all the receptacles and everything, I'm gonna swap them out to black Lutron. Um, so I'll talk about that when I do it too, if you guys wanna see it, um, I'll try to make that video on the shorter side. Um, so I have a couple tools that I picked up. Uh, this is a Wea Go Box. Seems really cool. Um, I actually picked this up at Lowe's. So Lowe's has started carrying Wea which I think is cool. Um, we is a German brand. Um, I've always heard that they make good things, but I honestly haven't played with them myself. Um, but I thought that this would be a neat uh, kit for inside my bag. Um, so it's like a plastic container. It's got a, uh, like a right angle little ratchet with um, a Phillips bit or a, a, a hex bit. And it's got Torx and Allens and a bunch of different stuff along with a, um, an extension. So, I just thought this might be a neat kit to kind of keep in my backpack all the time. So here's what it looks like out of the box. There is a small ratchet here um, that has a hex in the back. It's reversible. There's a little gear on the back to reverse it. Um, and then there's a bunch of bits in here. Torx, Allen, Phillips, one, two, three. Um, there's a square drive for like a quarter inch uh, socket um, and just a bunch of different stuff. Seems really cool. It's got a nice extension in here as well so you can get a little bit of reach. Um, so we'll keep this in my bag and, uh, I didn't realize it, but the case is actually metal. So that's super nice. It's got a nice, uh, solid click and it just, it's very tiny. Seems nice. Next, I picked up these. These are Knipex, uh, snap ring pliers. And I, um, I had to borrow a couple snap ring pliers for a project that I was doing recently. And I kind of have this um, saying where you only borrow tools once. Like if I need to borrow something, I generally borrow it once and then I buy it for myself. So I don't need to borrow it a second time. So this is a six pack of Knipex snap ring pliers. Um, so there's a couple different orientations. There's L or bent 90 degree like this, then there's straight. And then there are ones in here that do, um, this one pulls apart. And then there's also ones in here that squeeze together. So it's a six pack. It was like 130 bucks, something like that. But it comes in this nice uh, foam tray. The foam tray isn't as good as Sonic, but it's really not bad. So that's what that looks like right there. Next, I picked this up. This is a uh, Orion Motor Tech, OMT is the brand. I'll put a link in the description. This came from Amazon. This is a brake, uh, a brake caliper depressor kit, basically. I um, borrowed something very similar from O'Reilly's when I did the brakes on the Mini, and I was actually going to buy it from them, but they only had one and it was kind of janky and it was rusty and crappy and you could tell they had been lending it out for a long time. So I ended up just buying my own. So the reason that I picked the OMT is because all of these discs are like a black, um, like a black steel coating rather than being um, silver. So I don't think that they'll rust the way that the kit that I borrowed from O'Reilly's did. Um, it comes with two depressors. It comes with, uh, and this is a left hand, right hand. So they turn in different directions. Um, it comes with uh, different size, um, 
pads for different size rotors. So like, you know, F might be for BMW and M over here is for Mercedes and K is for Kia or, you know, whatever. Um, so there's a bunch of different letters here and it comes with a manual here actually that tells you like which ones fit which cars. Um, but really once you pull it out, you can just kind of figure out what it is. This is a really, really useful tool. It's super necessary if you're doing your own brakes, especially if you have rear, uh, rear, rear disc brakes where you have to screw the uh, piston back into the caliper. You really need this pin tool to be able to do that. So I picked this up again, um, I only borrow tools once. So the last time I borrowed them from O'Reilly, um, I bought these from Amazon. This was cheaper than the O'Reilly one and it's a nicer set. So again, I'll put a link in the description, but I now own one. Um, I got a couple things today from Obsessed Garage that I really wanted to unbox, which is honestly the reason I did this video. So um, here I've got this box, which I cut the tape and then remembered that I actually have a YouTube channel. So inside here, I've got a shirt. This is a Dreiss shirt. I just, I like OG shirts. They make good ones. I picked it up and, and added it. Um, and then I've got a couple other things that we'll just kind of set here. Nothing damaged, all complete. <coughs> Hmm, nothing damaged, all complete, everything good. So uh, first thing, I got some uh, Koshemi um, ASC, which is all round surface cleaner. Um, this is a good general cleaner for things. Um, I actually like to keep a bottle of this in my car. It's just nice for, you can use it for interior, you could use it for something like a, a bird poop or an accident of some sort, or uh, just to clean a, a whatever, a display or fingerprints off a dash or whatever. Um, so Koshemi ASC, it's a small bottle. It's got a nice sprayer on it, works very well. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great product. Um, next, I have a bag of stuff. So anytime you order like loose fittings or anything like that, they come this way. So I picked up another one of these. This is what they call a skin wedge tool. It's really just like a metal uh, pry bar with a curved end on it, but it, it has the ability to not mar surfaces. That's really, really nice. Um, it's made out of 4140. It holds up really well. It's got a good aversion to bends. It's just a great, great product. Um, so I ordered another one of those because I wanted to have them in more places than where I currently do. Um, so having a second one I thought was useful. It's like 20 bucks. It's one of the best things you can buy for 20 bucks. All right, <clears throat> next I have two fittings. So this is a uh, 3 8 female, female threaded, female quick connect. From, this is a Mossmatic. Uh, so this is going to go on the end of my pressure washer hose. I have an MTM fitting on there right now. It's starting to leak when the uh, system isn't pressurized with the pressure washer. So like if it just has water pressure behind it, it leaks and drips. So I got a new one, this is a Mossmatic. Um, they're a little bit tighter tolerances. They should work a little bit better. It's a lot more money, uh, but I thought I'd try it out. And then um, this is a new um, stainless steel plug. This goes on the uh, foam cannon. So this screws into the back of the foam cannon. It's a quarter inch uh, quick connect. And this is also a Mossmatic. I just grabbed one of these because mine's getting a little tarnished. I've got, a, again, an MTM on there and it's there's some uh, wear on it that you can see. So just figured I'd replace it before it leaks. Last thing I ordered, I'll do a completely separate video on this, so a new Tool Tuesday, but this is the Flex FS140 flexible shaft kit. Uh, so this is for the uh, PXC80 polisher, and here's what it comes with. Um, so we've got a wand, and then we've got a bunch of these heads for the polisher, um, and they're different uh, hardnesses. So there's like a soft, a medium, and a firm, um, and then this is the actual Flex uh, polisher unit. So you hold this in your hand and you kind of use these tips with it. So like I said, I'll go into a full video on this. I'll talk about it, why I ordered it, all of that. But really I wanted it to, I wanted to play around with it and see how good it was. Um, I saw a couple people online that were talking about it that really liked it. So I figured I'd give it a shot. And I want it to get into places that are tight, like uh, the door handle cups in the Mercedes, a great, a great example of that. Um, so if you look at, well, actually you could see, so if you look at like this area here, um, where you put your fingers behind to grab the door and open it. Um, oftentimes people with rings or just, you know, people scratch it with their nails, something like that. You end up with a bunch of little scratches on the inside of that cup. And this allows you to be able to polish that. So I'm interested in trying it out. We'll see how it is. Um, honestly, I like the Rupes HLR 75 so much that I wasn't so sure I was going to keep the Flex long-term. 
this will decide whether or not I get rid of the flex. If this thing works really well, I'll probably keep the flex just to run this. If it doesn't, then I'll probably get rid of the flex and sell this along with it. The very first thing I will say though, is it should have come with a case and it didn't. And that kind of sucks because you end up with like all these little heads that are floating around. So I'll have to figure out a place to put those. And it's like 300 bucks for a wand and a couple heads. So the very last thing that I have is this Dynaudio Sub 9S. So this is a, uh, this is a nine inch subwoofer um, that I'm going to be using under my desk. This is designed to pair with my Dynaudio LYD5 speakers that I have. Um, I bought it because in my office, I will have a use for the sub that's currently under my desk, which is an SVS SB1000 that will be going in my office for um, my TV setup. And then this is going to be going under my desk for my desk speakers and what's there. So I'll kind of have two separate sound systems in my office, which probably seems overkill, um, but why not, right? So um, packaging here, owner's manual on top, power cord, power cord, power cord. So there's like Europe, uh, USA, and then there's like a thicker USA. Why are there two US power cords? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, there's two different European power cords too. Okay, foam. Then here is the sub. Oh, this is a little baby. I didn't realize it was so small. That's actually kind of cool. All right, so let's play around with this. Here is the Dynaudio Sub 9S. So you can see the size of it. It's relatively small. It's a single nine inch subwoofer. I would say the overall height is probably 12 inches. It's about 12 inches wide. So like a foot by a foot by a foot. Um, on the back side, there is no grill because it is a studio speaker. So there is no grill on the front. And then on the back of it, you can see all of the settings. So there's on and auto, there's a phase adjustment, there's gain adjustment, um, and then there's a high pass for the satellite speakers. And you can see that all of the connectors that are on here are XLR connectors. What that means is you need to be using something that has balanced inputs and balanced outputs. So I'm using a, um, a shit uh, Jotunheim which is my preamp and that has XLR outputs. And then I will be running that through this and then up to my speakers, which are, like I said, Dynaudio LYD5s. So I'm really excited to hear how this sounds. I've heard these Dynaudio speakers are really good. Um, the SVS SB1000 that I have right now is really kind of overkill for like a desk speaker setup. It really can run away from the uh, LYDs. So I'm excited to see how this works. We're going to play around with it. We're going to come back to you and uh, let you know in a future video. But um, yeah, I really wanted to get this stuff unboxed. I wanted to play around with it. Uh, I appreciate you watching. Um, there will be a bunch of content coming in the future. Put some comments down below. Tell me what you'd like to see. And uh, I'll try to produce that content for you. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Have a great day.